with Sunday Sailing Club's 30th LE Beach Race Week comes to a close this afternoon and the final day of racing is likely to be superb, according to race director Dennis Thompson, who says competitors will sail in the remnants of yesterday's trade wins in a bay race. It will be a little weaker, maybe up to 13 knots. I expect a sea breeze influence in the bay. It may strengthen in the move around. We'll shorten courses if need be, he said. This has been one of the best early beach race week festival of sailing in memory. Competitors have had it all, nobody could complain they didn't have their chance, as each and every day since the regatta started last Thursday, has produced different conditions. Only one thing remained constant, the sunshine in this tropical part of the world. It's been a really good regatta. Competitors have had a bit of everything wind-wise, Thompson says. Whoever wins each division is a true champion, good all-round boats no matter the weather. The whole week has been good, one of the best. Our volunteers have handled whatever has been thrown at them, including the flipping of the trine run during the week. If we were back at school, it would be a tick with VG, very good. Next to it, be finished. one more day to get through, and it's hard to think of a better way to finish. It's another sparkling day, the bay will alive with color and conditions look to be ideal for all. On shore has been the same. With Sunday Sailing Club has made sure everyone has had a great time with various activities, entertainment each evening, something for everyone night and day. This is the World on Water Sailing News TV. Now the Seven Star Round Britain Island Race, because it's so tough, we run it every four years. It's tough because of all the headlands and all the tides and, you know, the different, as you move around the UK, then obviously the weather's going to change, weather has a big impact. So it's much tougher than sort of a typical transatlantic race. And that's what the attraction is. So we have a record entry this year. We've got 26 boats. We've got 12 class 40s. I mean, uh, these are ocean thoroughbreds, 40 foot long. It is like a small 60 in virtually every respect. You, you, you know, the boat operates in much the same way. The only thing that's missing is a little bit of complexity and a swinging keel. But uh, the boat in itself is very 60-ish in the way it sails and in the way it performs. I mean, the Class 40 is an amazing seagoing vessel, uh, but at the same time, it's very uncomfortable and, and I'm sure there will be some, some very tough points of the race. It's, there's just no redundant weight on the boat. It's literally just structure. Uh, there's nowhere comfortable to, to, to sleep or to rest. Actually sleeping on, on board in, in anything more than 25 knots is, is, is quite challenging. And even the noise down below is sometimes deafening. So it's, I think particularly between Ireland and Shetlands, it's going to be very interesting. We've got some um, incredible downwind conditions. Uh, but at the same time, we've really got to be careful that uh, we, don't, we don't break any sails because uh, there's going to, be, going to be very gusty. You have the, uh, the, the honour or the privilege of being the smallest boat in the race. Oh, really? But not the smallest rating, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> you must be looking forward to it. Have you done it before? No, no, no. We'll be the first uh, run retained. It is a massive event, and I, I admire the double-handed guys. I think, you know, but that's incredible. But, yeah, for me, the, the best option was the crewed option. So we're four up and two on, two off. Watch system, and, yeah, we'll be, we'll be fine. Who would you like to beat? Um, I'm not going to say. <laughs> um, I, all of them? All of them, yeah. Um, obviously, I'm hugely competitive anyway with my background in Paralympic sailing. So, yeah, obviously, I'll be feisty. But safety's always at the forefront of my mind with the offshore stuff. So, yeah, slow and steady. I'm, I'm looking forward to the 3600. She's a great offshore boat. There's three of them doing uh, this race. There's two of them in my class. So, uh, 
Yeah, we're looking forward to it. You know, it's an interesting race, a long race, and 3600s will enjoy it. And the Round Britain is a notoriously tough event, so uh, I'm expecting nothing uh, less than the worst. <laughs> <laughs>
after their fifth into Cape Town. Leg three through Simeon and Crew, some big challenges. <laughs> Emily Nagel took a full blow, and then the Southern Ocean dealt another big blow. We had a jive on in pretty hard conditions and um, had a bad one. We've um, pulled the track off the back of the mast. So you guys did an awesome job to get the main down. So the plan is hopefully get the track glued back on or screwed back on over the next day or two. But it's going to take time. The crew made running repairs and remarkably still managed to finish in Melbourne. But it meant a seventh in the leg and sixth overall on the leaderboard. With their mast fixed, the tricky leg four saw T Max and Abel's fortunes turn with a third into Hong Kong. You know, it's been almost 40 days at sea in a row, and uh, we were still enjoying each other in the end, <laughs> which is, you know, which is still a compliment to everyone. You know, uh, it's great that you uh, end up on the podium, and uh, yeah, I feel proud, proud of the boys and girls on board. On leg six, back south, it felt like Simeon's team were gelling together and hitting their stride. There is that pressure on the team, and it has and it's been there since we damaged the mast in week three. Um, I honestly think we're a better team than where we're sitting overall, and the only way to prove that is to get the results. Two days later, T Max and Abel were leading, but with Sun Hunkai Scallywag right behind. The last, the last two skates are the best two skates this boat's ever had, so you know, like so that's, that's good. Even navigator Jules Salter cracked a smile. What uh, position are we currently in? Oh, this can be answered by the size of the smile on Jules' face, actually. That's not laughing about. Simeon and crew battle with Sun Hunkai Scallywag all the way to the finish, claiming their first podium win. It was unbelievable. It was a I think close to a six and a half thousand mile or seven thousand mile match race, and then uh, even this this morning, you know, we had a couple of lead changes, and uh, yeah, unbelievable crew work. I'm unbelievable proud of the crew, and they did such a fantastic job, and we managed just be uh, one and a half mile in front and uh, finish the leg. Next, leg seven, back to the Southern Ocean, and one of the toughest stages in recent memory. Into uh, the open ocean now with a big smile. Probably the most loneliest place on Earth, Point uh, Nemo. We're in a position where we got through this leg in a really, really good shape, and we should be grateful for that so far. Making it into Itajaí, Brazil, and taking their third podium in a row was particularly significant for Martine Grail, back to her home country. To begin with, I didn't have a female idols in Brazil, but it's good to, uh, to be able to inspire new generations, and doing this race has been really cool, especially this last leg. It's been a full of very good sailing and very good experience. Leg nine and Team Max and Abel were on firing form again, smashing the 24-hour record. They clocked up the fastest 24-hour run in the history of the race, 601.63 nautical miles, averaging over 25 knots, smashing the previous record established by Torben Grail, Martin's father. Uh, for sure, Martina is excited, so uh, she can uh, call her father Captain Slow now at the dinner table. But uh, no, it's pretty motivating for all of us. Uh, they finished second into Cardiff after a double Dutch battle with Team Brunel. On leg 10, Team Max and Abel led around the southwest of Ireland. Then, in big breeze blasting from the top of Great Britain towards the south of Norway, they overtook Dongfong Race Team to slide in behind Team Brunel with Mafre out in front. Simeon and crew would have to be content with third into Gothenburg and fourth on the overall leaderboard. The final leg back into the Netherlands, Simeon was determined to sail into home waters in style. Which he achieved, chasing overall winner Dongfong Race Team across the packed finish line to be the first Dutch boat to hear the roar of the home crowd. The team posted their sixth podium finish for the race, leaving Team Axenabel fourth overall in Team Point's debut as skipper.
You're watching The World on Water, Sally News TV. One last hurrah, huh? Then we get to go home. Hear the sun shining in Sydney. It started raining here, so it's time to leave. That's our third event in the NACRA, and um, you know, it's Haley's first big medal race under a lot of pressure. And I just said to her earlier, I said, Look, you know, we've already overachieved the results we were hoping to get here, so I think if we just go out and have a bit of fun, um, the rest should take care of yourself. We waited around for quite a while, and by the time we got out there after the RSX, the breeze just dropped out completely, so we didn't get to race at all. Um, which was disappointing because we really wanted to have a good chance of winning this event but um, we have to settle for second, one point off the lead and um, you know it's been a very good week for us. <laughs> Riveting day on the NACA course today. Uh, we went and floated about for about two hours, got everything really wet so we're good for pack up. Um, you know, had some banter between Nathan Howes so it was a great day on the water, but uh, you know, six overall isn't bad. A bit of an up and down regatta for us, but we're pretty excited to head home and see everyone. We're stoked for our teammates, Nathan and Haley, to get second here from not being on the boat for very long. It's a really great effort. It just shows how much potential our squad has to grow for the next two years. So congratulations to them, and we're looking forward to going to Tokyo with them in a few weeks' time for the Sailing World Cup. Like the amount of sailing that we've, we've done in the last six months is, is not very much, so we're pretty excited for the future. And, um, and yeah, we, we, we're happy to take silver. I think one of the, the biggest reasons why we've been able to, to perform so well here is the Australian squad setup. You know, I experienced that a lot in the 49er class of having a really strong class coach who shares all the information around whether it's about equipment or boat handling or how to sail the boat well. And, um, you know, Jason and Lisa have obviously been you know, really generous in sharing that information with us and Bundy, you know, as a coach sort of getting us involved and, you know, we haven't done a whole lot of time on the water but what we have done has been really efficient and effective and that's why we've been able to, you know, come to Europe with, um, you know, fast equipment and, um, and already make the podium in our third event. And in second place, the silver medal winners of the Hippo Sailing World Championship for Moose 2018, Nathan and Haley Alderich representing Australia. This is the World on Water Sailing News TV. It's nature in the raw. That's what the sea's all about. It makes its own rules, you don't make rules. People talk about conquering the sea, never conquer the sea. Sea doesn't notice you. Why do a race like the Golden Globe? Well, why not? It's there to be challenged. Some people that are just born to be adventurers and explorers. Ask most people what it would be like to be locked up in a, in a jail on your own for nine or 10 months with hard labor, because that's what this is about. Out in the ocean, all there is is you, your boat, and nothing but sea. No one to complain to, no one to cry to, no one to laugh with. Just you. Totally, totally alone. It's just going to push you to your absolute limits, to your max. The biggest risk is, well, not coming back. The Golden Globe race is the biggest challenge that I've ever undertaken. Well, it's the biggest idea I've ever had. I think it eclipses everything else I've done. It wasn't just a question of, of doing it, it was a question that we didn't know it was possible. So to finish it would just, it's a dream come true, you know? It's everything.
You're watching The World on Water Sailing News TV. So we're here in Aarhus, Denmark for the final day of 49er and NACRA racing of the World Championships and the medal race day for the lasers. And right now it's, it's stonking windy outside, it's blown dogs off chains, in fact it's blown my regatta beard straight off. So um, we're going we're gonna to go talk to some of the 49er bit boys and hopefully they still have their regatta beards on because as everyone knows that gives you a lot of wisdom for racing. How would you describe the breeze today? As an Australian. I was just telling the physios this morning that I think a few of us have packed our brown pants. <laughs> but but we're, all, we're all voting that if the Nacras were to go out racing, we just want to go and spectate that. Should be a bit of action out there. Davo. Yarkos. My housemate back in Sydney. How's it going? <laughs> Good, mate. I see uh, we, we're a bit different in the Cheeks department. You've still got your, your scruff? Yeah, this is uh, a few months worth. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, how much wisdom has the uh, regatta beard provided you these last few months? Uh, not much, actually. <laughs> so some of our rising stars this week have been Tash and Annie in the 49er FX. Uh, so second place going into the final day of Goldfleet and unfortunately slipped outside the medal race. But such a young team, they're full of promise. And I've spotted them over here, so let's go have a talk. And... Um, just like me, they also have a foreign coach, a Spanish coach, so we're going to find out what exactly Javi says, which is a bit different to what we would usually hear. Tash and Annie, Javi, how are you going? Uh, having a little coffee chat. Yeah, coffee chat. Mind if I interrupt for a minute? I'll just come down here. Girls, uh, I don't know where to start. You guys had a fantastic week. It was really promising and everyone in Australia is super... Super excited for for you guys and unfortunate about yesterday, but so young and so much to go. Yeah, thanks so much. Yeah, we were just talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you go, you go. Um, yeah, it was it was really really great week for us. We're really excited and um, we just can't wait to get back home to learn some more and train, get back into it. So Annie. You and I, we both have uh, something in common. We both have a Spanish coach and it's a little different because, you know, Australians, we communicate in certain ways. I definitely don't speak much English, only Australian, and Raf and I don't understand each other one word. What is something that Javi says to you on the regular <laughs> that you can share with us? I don't think I'm allowed to say it. It's a, there's a lot of swearing. Um, we actually taught him that, so I feel bad. But his English is definitely improving as the days go on. Probably better than yeah, yeah, Harvey has these hand signals, but we don't know what they mean yet, so... He just does all these little things, no one really understands. That, that's... I'm spinning faster, you know? Like, I'm getting all on gas. But then like, the other day, honest. it was like... <laughs> and then you were... Uh, yeah, I was like pointing the wheel in the water. You know, like, there's wheel, you know? like. Just put the poise up, you know? <laughs> <laughs> that, I, that was you started like you dodging were. and you were yeah, like, yeah, what's yeah, going on? Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right, funny as. All right, thanks girls, yeah, appreciate fun. it. <laughs> Look forward to seeing you guys on the water in Tokyo. Thank you. Usually uh, the laser boys are quite quite dry, drier than a man in Zyke's new ice attack offshore foul weather gear. So uh, we'll see if we can get something out of him, but I don't hold much hope. Wernie, how are you, mate? Yeah, pretty good, pretty good. That's good. Stonk and windy outside. King of Swing City, you're referred to as. <laughs> how are you feeling going into today? Yeah, good, good, good. Um, yeah, it's pretty fresh. Yeah. Um, yeah, pretty keen to go out and have a bit of a scent. Um, hopefully we get to go out on time, so that'll be good. Yeah, mate, and, and, and hats off to you. You've had a great week, secured of a medal and a chance to win the Worlds today. Pretty exciting. Yeah, yeah, obviously a position I haven't really been in before. Um, yeah, medaled last year, but obviously a little, little bit more close to the top now. Um, yeah, just keen to have some fun and give it a crack and obviously not much to lose, so, yeah. And we've talked about it. You have a, a thing with the Worlds where you improve each year a certain amount. Can you talk to us about that a little bit? Yeah, since 2015, it's been 5-4-3. Uh, so, um, going off that, I'm uh, pretty sure I've got to lock in a two, but <laughs> if I could skip the two and go straight to the one, that'd be pretty handy. So, um... 
I've heard, I've heard you laser sailors a bit different in the head. We all know single-handed sailors have a few screws loose. I talk to myself. Is there something you do on the water which, uh, <laughs> you know, you'd, you'd prefer to keep to yourself, but you're going to share with Australia right now? Um, oh, not really. I don't think. Um, I guess the stuff that I do, I kind of think is normal. So there's probably, <laughs> I think if I listed it all, then people would think there's some pretty strange things there. But... I can't really think of one strange thing uh, off the top of my head. Yeah, right. I, I got no no uh, doubt that you probably talk to yourself because you're pretty weird. <laughs> but uh, yeah, nah. For me, I think I do normal stuff. Yeah, right, right. Okay, and uh, we won't keep you too long. I know you're busy talking to all your friends, which is nobody. So um, <laughs> we've been talking a little bit about uh, regatta beards. Mine's been clean, blown off by the wind today. You obviously haven't been outside. You got to fair bit of shanky growth there. Mm. Tell us about your regatta beard and why you keep it. Yeah, well, some of the boys, they call it the neck beard. I can't grow any hair on my cheeks, but just on my neck. So, um, yeah, that's what I do. But, uh, yeah, I was planning to get rid of it tonight, um, get ready for the uh, the missus on the on the flight home. So uh, she doesn't really like it. But uh, basically just lazy and, uh, you know, keep it around. But, uh, yeah, today I'll blow it off and uh, I won't have it by tomorrow.